today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about basic hard drive setup uh, for your audio production workstation. So if you if you want to learn about RAID array setups, how to set up backup mirrors, or even more advanced things like Vienna Ensemble Pro Master Slave setup, then I'd suggest looking elsewhere on YouTube for these because there's loads of videos already out there which people have done which provide you enough information on those topics. We're just going to be looking at the, the basic principles behind how you should be installing your software, where you should be installing it to, where you should be saving your files and projects to, and how you should be setting up your um, sample libraries for audio production. Things that you tend to install to your operating system drive or your C drive is generally speaking all of your programs. So anything like a DAW, your music software, uh, such as Cubase, Pro Tools, Presonus, Studio One, whatever you're using, that will be installed to your C drive. Things like VST plugins, EQs, compressors, effects, all that, C drive. And then when it comes to VST instruments, uh, the software side of things, the program, the VST Instruments program will also get installed to the C drive. The reason why uh, we don't do things like save our files to a C drive, our pictures and videos, or our samples from our VST Instruments to C drive is there's a couple of important reasons. The first major reason is that if anything ever goes wrong with your main OS drive and it crashes and dies a horrible death or you need to do a clean format because you've somehow got a virus then you're going to lose all of, of this information and you're going to have to reinstall all your software and your sample content but the, the other thing is that you're going to lose all your project files, your pictures and your videos and stuff so it's never a good idea to install everything to one drive. Another reason being is that with hard drives you have they have this thing called read and write so depending on the performance of your hard drive, if it's an SSD or if it's a mechanical hard drive, there is a, a, a limit to how much data it can access at any given moment. If you have too many things on one hard drive and it's trying to access all this different information here in one go, you get this thing called a bottleneck. Now think of it as a tunnel. Um, this is the big blob of everything trying to fit through that tunnel. It's going to hit the sides here and it's just going to drip through bit by bit so the performance of your hard drive is going to be dead slow so if, you, if you're a bit more methodical with things and you install them uh, separately across different hard drives when it comes to this tunnel uh, this stuff is just going to work it's going to get loaded into RAM and it's just going to work nice and easy no no qualms no traffic no nothing it's just going to be nice and quick so with your operating system, your C drive, it's just mainly all the software side of things that you're going to be installing. Um, anything like your personal files, your videos, your pictures, your projects and all that, that's going to get installed to a separate drive, which most of you will have if you've bought an entry level PC. They tend to be mechanical hard drives uh, for this. You can use SSDs if you want. SSDs are always quicker, much more efficient. Uh, but for you know, storage mechanical hard drives are fine. The the, the good thing about them is that they're cheap. So um, you'll probably have something like a one terabyte uh, hard TB. That looks like T6. <laughs> you, you normally have like a one terabyte, two terabyte, something like that. It's always a good idea to have very large storage drives if you know you're going to be storing a lot of things on there. So uh, and with mechanical hard drives, they're a lot cheaper than SSD. So you get more storage capacity for the price. So it's pretty self-explanatory really. Anything that's not software related, so um, audio files for your projects or pictures or videos, anything, you can install them, to, uh, install them, save them to a projects drive. Now if you're a little bit more kind of um, anal about it, for lack of a better word, you can have a separate drive. So I have a separate drive. Um, I, I have another um, mechanical hard drive which I store all my project files on and then the rest of it, my pictures and videos and that I store on a separate drive. So I, I have two drives for storage um, just because of how I work. I do a bit of video editing so I've got my setup a little bit different. Now when it comes to sample libraries, it's a, a, a different story altogether. With sample libraries, I always recommend getting an SSD drive 
just because the sheer amount of samples which have been shifted across the hard drive when you're streaming them from the disk um, in your DAW is ridiculous, it's mind-boggling. Like, one note of an instrument could be like a thousand samples. <laughs> so it's, um, when you think about having lots of instruments loaded up in a session and you're playing all these different samples, especially high-end sample libraries, then you're going to need a very quick um, hard drive which has got a decent size capacity to handle all these things on. Or you can get more multiple smaller versions of hard drives and break them down that way across the hard drives. So when you're installing a VST instrument like an orchestral library or a no guitar library or something like that, you'll find that there's three different uh, stages to installing on. The first one is the software, so it will ask you where to install the software, you'll tell it your C drive wherever you want in your C drive. The second thing it'll ask you is where it would like to install the DDL files or DLL files, it's one of the two, uh, which is the, it's sort of like the, the same file as the VST plugin uses. So when you've got your DAW open, it'll ask you where this file is so it knows where to load the instrument from. So it's always a good idea to also install that to your C drive as well. And then the final thing is the sample content, which is the large portion of the, the software. This is what you want to be installing onto a separate drive completely. So I have a dedicated hard drive just for sample library content. Now there's there's a good reason why, well obviously there's two good reasons, A it reduces a bottleneck and B if, if you do need to you know, this dies and you need to reinstall everything, then you're not going to be spending days and days installing sample content to your hard drive because you've already got it on a separate drive. And the beauty of this is, when I come to reinstall things, if anything went fatally wrong, which it hasn't done yet, touch wood, uh, for many years, um, then um, all you need to do is install the software, which takes seconds, and then you just point the software to where you've got the... Uh, the, the, the sample content installed and it will just work. So that's that's another bonus to splitting things across your hard drives. So in terms of the basics, it's always a good idea to have at least three hard drives in your computer um, as this will improve the performance, reduce the bottlenecks and you know things will be running a lot more smoothly for when you're creating your tunes. So that's pretty much it for this video guys, it's just a very brief basic overview of how you should be installing things and where they should be uh, installed to and how you should be saving your projects etc etc. And uh, if you've liked the video give it a thumbs up, if you dislike the video give it a thumbs down. Um, always if you have any questions uh, just leave a comment in the box below, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video.